will show you places you can vacation on just one tank of gasoline. Okay, thank you. Have a nice trip. If you drive the 72 miles to Port Clinton this summer, one tank of gasoline will take you there and back home with plenty to spare. Port Clinton, of course, is one of the jumping off points to the Lake Erie Islands and also home of the Island Airlines that provides regular air taxi service to the islands seven days a week. It's also the year-round link with the mainland. The other way to get to the islands is by ferry boat that during the spring and summer months also operates a seven-day week. And there's plenty to do on the islands. On South Bass, for example, there are over 60 caves. Two of them are open to the public. This is Crystal Cave beneath the Heinemann Winery. If you're not inclined to cave exploring, well, you can enjoy the winery garden along with a fresh bottle of island wine. Rented golf carts, bicycles, and just plain walking are the ways usually favored by tourists. The island is only a couple of miles long. The state park has tent camping sites available and two cabins rented on a first-come, first-served basis. They also offer a challenge for treasure hunters. The park is located on the site of the former 650-room Victory Hotel that burned at the turn of the century. There are reports that bits of silverware in China still turn up in the rubble. Of course, the Perry Victory Monument dominates the island and is open to visitors. There are guides to explain just how important this island was in the War of 1812. Fishing, boating, or just relaxing, you can have an island vacation this year and do it all on just one tank of gasoline. Just think, this might be the summer when you can get away from everyone. Neil Zerker, New Center 8, Star of Island, Lake Erie. Neil's got a little island there of his own. Well, the Indians won a vacation budget this summer. Don't give up. New Center 8's Neil Zerker all this week is showing where you can still have a vacation and go there and back on one tank of gasoline. Okay, thank you. Have a nice trip. It's 91 miles southeast of Cleveland to Ohio's newest tourist attraction, the rolling countryside around Holmes, Harrison, and Tuscarawas County. A tank of gas will easily take you here and take you home again. This is still farm country. And it's not unusual to even find deer alongside the road. They call this area of Holmes County the Little Switzerland of Ohio, and with good reason, for it seems like every side road has a cheese factory on it. And inside, you're going to find more than just Swiss cheese these days. In fact, they've found ways now to make chocolate Swiss cheese, pickle Swiss cheese, and you name it. Most everyone knows that this is Amish country around here, but did you know that this is the largest Amish settlement in the world? And you'll have missed a rare treat if you don't try some of the Amish cooking at restaurants like Der Dutchman here in Walnut Creek. For 5 dollars they have a family-style meal that's all you can eat. And while you're in the area, you might want to spend the night or the weekend with a Mennonite family. The Harold Stoltzfus family welcomes you to their home. For $25 a night for a couple, they'll rent you a two-bedroom apartment. We also rent uh, our own bedrooms on the second floor of our home. But it's not all horses, Swiss cheese, and Amish. Nearby is beautiful state-owned Tappan Lake. It's good fishing, there's camping areas, and my personal favorite, a chance to be the skipper of a pontoon boat. Neil Zerker, New Center 8, Tappan Lake. NFL football player has some very serious problems down in Dallas. You're right, Judd. We'll be back. Summer, but people are buying less. And with that in mind, all this week, New Center 8's Neil Zerker is showing us how to still have a vacation and use only one tank of gasoline. Okay, thank you. Have a nice trip. Disco roller skating has come to New York, Los Angeles, and now Loudonville, Ohio. That's right, and it also may have the first disco roller skating park in the country, all part of a growing list of tourist attractions just 80 miles from Cleveland in southern Ashland County. A vacation area you can reach and return. All you have to do is fill up once. A tank is all it takes. 
If your tastes run to gourmet cookery, how about this? If you have six or more on your party, the people who live here in this 17-room mansion, the Mohican Manor, will, for a price, of course, let you eat amongst their antiques and serve you a gourmet meal. But it's by reservation only. And if you want to spend the night in a classy place, you might have to go out of town. There are uh, motels in nearby Mansfield and in Worcester and in Ashland, and now all of those are about 20 miles away. Yeah, but about here, where do you stay? Well, you really bring your own. <laughs> Joe Lemon is one of this area's biggest boosters, and with good reason, she says, a few miles away is beautiful Mohican State Park and the nearby Pleasant Hill Dam and Lake area. There are some cabins available, and although the lodge is usually booked a year ahead, there are occasionally cancellations. Just north of here is author Lewis Bromfield's famous Malabar Farm. For you movie buffs, this is where Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall were married back in 1945. Whether you come for a day or a long weekend or even more, you'll discover that Loudonville is the canoe capital of Ohio, if not the USA. And the river is just the perfect spot for the beginning canoeist. <laughs> I get the water out. Neil Zerker, News Center 8, Loudonville. Well, everything can always be perfect, and I noticed that he had his little interview. Well, lend an ear to some suggestions News Center 8's Neil Zerker has on vacations you can take on one tank of gasoline. Okay, thank you. Have a nice trip. like to go east for your vacation, we'll try one on the Pennsylvania border. It's about 82 miles. One tank will take you there and back to Cleveland very easily. <laughs> Connie out of Ohio may have only once been a whistle stop, but you might make a stop for lunch and be sure that when you do, you visit their famous railroad museum. <laughs> Speaking of eating, be sure you stop at Pima Tuning Lake and watch the fish eat. That's right, it's become a tourist attraction, feeding the fish. Ever since the 1930s, tourists have been stopping here feeding these hungry carp. They estimate now that an average of 10,000 pounds of bread each week is tossed to the fish. It's amazing. You just wonder how they can keep eating and eating like that when it's fed to them constantly. Stale bread at three lows for a dollar has become big business here at Pima Tuning Lake. But not everybody feeds the fish. Some people fish for fish. Still others go sailing. And still others go swimming. And if they tire of this, they can always go into Pennsylvania about 10 miles. There's Conneaut Lake Park. The boardwalk and the old hotel have become landmarks in this amusement park along the shores of Pennsylvania's largest inland lake. And right across the road is Fairyland Forest, a place the kids may want to visit. I told you the kids would like it. Neil Zerker, New Center 8. Conneaut Lake, Pennsylvania. <laughs> you almost fit that slide. Hopefully, we're looking for a very, very beautiful weekend, though, Dick. We are going to have a summerly weekend, and this would be a good time. A high cost of gasoline. So all this week, New Center H. Neil Zerker has been traveling to show that there are many spots you can take a vacation this summer and do it on only one tank of gasoline. Okay, thank you. Have a nice trip. Of course, one way to save all kinds of gasoline is to stay home. In fact, take advantage of some of the local package programs offered by motels and hotels around the Cleveland area. For just relaxing, many of the motels now offer piped-in first-run movies right in your room. Come in. On weekends, motels aren't quite as busy, and so to get your business, they offer incentives such as baskets Sir, of complimentary like fruit. For the compliment well, thank you. And we hope you enjoy your stay. Thank you very much. I well, appreciate it. Bye-bye. Now that you've had a chance to relax, the next thing to do is go out and see Cleveland as a tourist. You might start with the Metropolitan Park System. Take a look at some of those tree-lined roads and those fords across the river. <laughs> Or perhaps a leisurely ride on the good time and see the Cleveland skyline from the perspective of the Cuyahoga River. And the latest way to see the city, from the air. A helicopter tour service operates out of Burke Lakefront Airport every weekend. 
And at the end of the day, you might explore one of the many fine restaurants here in Cleveland. Incidentally, this isn't the end of the series. Every Friday this summer, we're going to show you just how far you can go on a tank of gasoline and still have a vacation. We'll prove that one tank is all it takes. Neil Zerker, New Center 8, Cleveland. Well, Jim has uncovered some new facts on a Browns line starting to make folks in the watch series by popular demand. New Center 8's Neil Zerker continues his A Tank Is All It Takes feature that offers ideas for vacations on just one tank of gasoline. It's 121 miles from Cleveland to Coshocton, but it's through beautiful rolling countryside like this. Our destination, Roscoe Village a restored canal town of the 19th century that is fast becoming one of Ohio's favorite new tourist spots. The horse-drawn trolley makes regular tours of the community. In the wintertime, the horses pull bobsled tours. The warehouse is just one of several good restaurants in the village. Be sure to visit the basement for the Canal Boater Buffet, and on weekends, they also offer entertainment. Small groups who call ahead can also take free tours of the Colonial Flag Company in nearby Coshocton, the only company in Ohio that manufactures American flags. And while no state parks are located nearby, the city-owned Lake Park offers swimming and camping facilities at rates comparable to state parks. But no trip to Roscoe Village would be complete without a silent, majestic ride aboard the canal boat. Monticello II, over a one-mile section of the Ohio Canal. For New Center 8's Consumer Watch, Neil Zerker in Coshocton. Well, the Indians left town today, and the Browns moved right in. For the second week in a row, we're Center 8's Neil Zerker goes traveling to show us another vacation spot you can reach and return on just one tank of gas. It's 92 miles from Cleveland to one of Pennsylvania's best-kept secrets, Presque Isle State Park, just outside of Erie. The park itself is 3,100 acres of forest and ponds surrounded by seven miles of beaches. The beaches are some of the finest along Lake Erie and are absolutely free to the public. While the swimming areas are well staffed with lifeguards, you can still find long deserted stretches that are perfect for beachcombing. On the bay side of the peninsula are boat ramps and fishing areas. No overnight camping is allowed in the park. The only people who live here are these houseboat owners at Horseshoe Bay. Campgrounds can be found just outside the park. And nearby is a Best Western Motel with an interesting restaurant. $4.95, you can get a sirloin steak dinner. The interesting part is that the meat is served to you raw. You're invited to go to a grill in the center of the room and cook your own. And before you leave, visit historic downtown Erie. And go aboard a replica of Oliver Hazard Perry's flagship, the Niagara. But back to Presque Isle. The one thing you're struck with in this peninsula just across the bay from Pennsylvania's third largest city is the quiet a perfect place to hang a hammock and catch a nap. For New Center 8's Consumer Watch, Neil Zerker, Presque Isle, Pennsylvania. Figure he has that life out. preserver everywhere, <laughs> everywhere he goes. He goes. <laughs> Neil Zerker hits the road again to bring us a vacation suggestion that can be reached on less than a tank of gasoline. It's 146 miles from Cleveland to Zanesville, and you'll use about three quarters of a tank of gasoline there and back. But it's a trip rich in history. First, stop at the National Road Zane Gray Museum. A lifelike diorama explains the National Road importance to this country, and you get to look at the artifacts belonging to the famous Western writer, Zane Gray, who was born here in Zanesville. A few miles up the road, you can climb to Pioneer Park to look down on the famous Y Bridge, the only one like it in the world. But this is the main reason to visit Zanesville, a paddle wheel boat named the Lorena. 
offers cruises daily down the Muskingum River and on Wednesday evenings offers a three-hour dinner cruise for $13.95 per person. The boat is named for a famous Civil War song written by a Zanesville man to mark a broken love affair. Each day as the boat starts its cruise, the song echoes across the river, a tribute to that long ago girl, and now boat named Lorena. Since last I held that hand in mine and felt the pulse beat fast, glory. For New Center 8's Consumer Watch, Neil Zerker in Zanesville. Boy, that looks like a nice trip. Sure does. Well, Jim has his second exclusive on the Cavaliers in as many days. That's true, and uh, we also have an old tank full of gasoline and left the country. You can do it, too. It's 198 miles from here to Buffalo, New York, and you'll need a full tank of gasoline for this trip. For starters, a quick visit to the QRS Piano Roll Factory, the largest supplier of player piano rolls in America. Tours are available, but call first. A drive across the Peace Bridge and a few pleasant miles down the Niagara River, and you're in Niagara Falls, Canada. If you haven't been here lately, you'll be pleasantly surprised by the expanded tourist facilities. And if you don't like to walk, you can see the falls by boat, tour train, double-decker bus, or my favorite, the horse-drawn carriage. Be sure to take time to stop at the Niagara Horticultural School and stroll through the acres of formal English gardens. It's absolutely free. Fifteen more miles down the river and you step back into history and arrive at Niagara-on-the-Lake, home of the Shaw Theater Festival each year, and also home of the Pillar and Post Motel and Restaurant. Among the more notables who have slept and eaten here, the Queen of England and her husband, Prince Philip. The restaurant features 18th century decor, complimentary fresh fruit appetizers, and fresh warm rolls served at your plate. The bedrooms, many with fireplaces, rent from $48 and up a night. And before you start for home, fill up your tank. Gasoline in Canada costs only about $1 a gallon. For New Center 8's Consumer Watch, Neil Zerker, Ontario, Canada. Well, I'm glad to know about those gas prices. New Center 8's Neil Zerker fills up his tank and heads south. This time, it's a one-tank trip to the country road state. Here's Neil. Don't believe all those bad things you've heard about Wheeling, West Virginia. It's really a very nice town for a vacation. Located just across the Ohio River, it's 396 miles there and back from Cleveland. And you can easily do it on a single tank of gasoline. First stop, Capitol Theater in downtown Wheeling, home of WWVA's Jamboree USA. For 46 years, the greats of country music have been broadcasting from this town. The Wheeling Park system is second to none. 1,400-acre Ogilvy Park, located on top of a mountain, offers lodge rooms, cabins, and camping areas, a championship golf course, and stocked lakes for fishing and boating. For some good food at a bargain price, go back across the river to St. Clairsville, Ohio, to Melman's Cafeteria. They offer over 22 selections of main courses, averaging about a dollar and a half to a top price of $3.50 for steak. And most of the baked goods are made from scratch right in their own kitchens. Here comes Bucky. Here we go. Here back to Wheeling, try an evening at the only dog racing track in the Midwest. Unlike horse racing, the dogs race all year long, summer and winter, on a Monday through Saturday schedule. And before you leave, be sure to try out the Ohio Valley's largest water slide, built right into the side of a mountain here at Wheeling Park. A few days and you'll understand why they call this state wild and wonderful. For New Center Aid's Consumer Watch, Neil Zerker, Wheeling, West Virginia. 
I don't think it's Neil Zerker has a suggestion tonight that you can take on just one tank of gasoline. Here's New Center 8's Consumer Watch. From Cleveland to Dayton and back, it's 434 miles, and you can make it on a tank of gasoline. Dayton, a town that produced the Wright brothers, who taught the world how to fly. And you can't find a better entertainment bargain than a visit to the Air Force Museum. Admission is free, and it's the largest and oldest military museum in the world, containing over 130 aircraft that trace the development of aviation from Kitty Hawk to manned space flight. Another entertainment bargain that is one of Dayton's best kept secrets is beautiful Carillon Park. Again, admission is free, both for the concerts and to visit the many historic buildings and items tucked away in a shady grove at the base of the Carillon. And Dayton is also the home of a poet. Listen to these words. To accept love, beauty, and being, you must take the earth, for tonight may be the ending of the beginning of life. Well, I don't get to see it. This is the author, former Marine, former Army Ranger, street fighter, arm wrestling champion, Duke Morris, at his restaurant, The Golden Ox. Duke's poems can be found hanging all over the restaurant, even on the placemats. And along with the price of his spaghetti and steaks, Duke gives away copies of his poems. This is a vacation spot with something for just about everyone. For New Center Aid's Consumer Watch, Neil Zerker, Dayton, Ohio. Well, as Dick pointed out, we do have a lot of rain in the area, and Jim, I guess it's a good thing. He's been traveling again, and this week on Consumer Watch, he tells us how to beat the traffic jams and also how to get the most enjoyment from a trip to a very familiar place. It's a 128-mile round trip from Cleveland to Cedar Point, and here's a tip. Avoid those traffic jams and long walks from the parking lot. Take the ferry boat from Sandusky. It's a pleasant 15-minute ride across Sandusky Bay, and it runs every half hour from 7 in the morning until midnight, and it's rarely crowded. And best of all, it docks near the center of the amusement park, just a few steps from one of the gates. Many people also overlook Frontier Trail, a collection of artisans who still practice long-ago crafts and make America's pioneer era come to life. The ringing hammer of the blacksmith shop it's only steps away to the midway and rides and activities for the entire family. Seems like every year something's new here. This year it's Oceana, a trained sea animal show that overlooks the beach. And that Cedar Point Beach is world famous. It's where the football forward pass was developed by Newt Rockney. The first overwater flight by an airplane landed here. And it's still one of the finest swimming beaches on Lake Erie. For New Center 8's Consumer Watch, Neil Zerker, Sandusky. <laughs> I wonder if he ever takes that shirt and hat off. I hope so. <laughs> Last week, Zerker took his inner tube and went in search of a lake that builds itself on the edge of paradise. It's a 202 mile round trip from Cleveland to an area of southeast Ohio they call the edge of paradise. The centerpiece of this Ohio paradise is the Atwood Lake Lodge Resort, a part of the Muskingum Watershed Conservancy District. Seven mile long Atwood Lake is the largest inland sailing lake in Ohio and a perfect place for the novice as well as the experienced sailor. And this is one park where if you're a camper, you can camp right on the water's edge for only $5.50 per night. The 102 room lodge sits on a hill overlooking the lake. One of the specialties is an all-you-can-eat breakfast buffet that at noon becomes the all-you-can-eat lunch buffet. And they also offer a four-day vacation for a family of four, just $165. There's really so much to do here at Atwood, it's hard to list everything. You can try your hand at water sledding or sailing a boat, swimming, or just sit back and enjoy the scenery. Try it you probably like it. 
For New Center 8's Consumer Watch, Neil Zerker aboard the Bismarck III. <laughs> New Center 8's Neil Zerker shows us how to use less than a tank full and still take a voyage and visit a foreign country. Would you believe it's only 62 miles to the entrance to Canada? And that's exactly the mileage if you take the Pelee Islander, the auto ferry from Sandusky to Kingsville, Ontario. It's a pleasant, relaxing way to reach Canada. It takes about four and a half hours, and it's not too expensive, about $20 for a car and two passengers. Kingsville, you'll find, is one of the many picturesque Canadian fishing villages that dot the north shore of Lake Erie. And you're only a few miles from spectacular Point Pelee National Park. A mile-long boardwalk wends its way through over 2,500 acres of marshland. The entire park is surrounded by 14 miles of some of the finest beaches on Lake Erie. While no camping is permitted in the park, there are facilities nearby. Now, a Lebanese restaurant like Saad's, you would think, would serve kiba, shish kebab, or tahini. Well, they do. But they're most famous for their southern-style barbecue spare ribs. In fact, they sell over five tons of them each year. And Leamington is the tomato capital of the world. Even their information booth is shaped like a tomato. Just ask them anything and they'll tell you where to go. For New Center 8's Consumer Watch, Neil Zerker, Ontario, Canada. Neil carries that thing with him everywhere, doesn't he? <laughs> it's hard to type, though, with that on his shoulder. Have you ever it noticed? Is, yeah. The Red Hot <laughs> Indians swing back into action tonight. That's exactly right, and despite the fact the Indians are hot, it's all it takes to go and return from a vacation spot with a European flavor. Here's New Center 8's Neil Zerker and our Consumer Watch segment. They call Sugar Creek the Little Switzerland of Ohio, and it may well be one of the larger Swiss communities in the state. They take their Swiss heritage seriously here. And when you visit, be sure to stop at the Alpine Hills Museum a small but sophisticated attraction that uses audio, visual, and light displays very effectively to tell the story of the community, and it's all free. Within a 20-minute drive are located 15 cheese factories where you can watch them make Swiss cheese on a daily basis, and if you ask, they'll usually give you a sample. And if you're hungry, you might stop in at the Dutch Valley Restaurant. It's all you can eat, family style, for as little as $5.50 a person. A lot of local people eat here. But the big event each year is the annual Swiss Festival in September, where you can see such events as Steinstassen. That's a Swiss word for tossing a 148-pound boulder, 10 feet or better, as 6'8 John Enfield is doing here as he practices for the annual event. A visit to Sugar Creek this year might be a way to visit Switzerland without leaving Ohio. Excuse me. For New Center 8's Consumer Watch, Neil Zerker in Tuscarawas County. Zerker's Zerker. always been extraordinarily strong. <laughs> Fred is in for Jim tonight, and I guess the pro golf Neil Zerker takes us to a vacation spot in Ohio that offers castles and caves and lakes and islands, and it's only a tank full of gasoline from Cleveland. It's a 462-mile round trip from Cleveland to Bell Fountain in Logan County, home of the world's shortest street, McKinley, just 30 feet long. With covered bridges and rolling hills, castles and caves, Logan County could easily be called Ohio's Camelot. Ohio's only alpine slide here. It's sort of a toboggan with wheels that shoots down the side of Mad River Mountain, twisting and turning until it reaches the meadow below. 
It costs two bucks a ride, but if you ride between noon and 8 p.m., you can have unlimited rides for four hours for eight dollars. That includes the chairlift to the top. For more leisurely activities, visit Indian Lake with its 69 islands with boating, fishing, swimming, and a unique restaurant called O'Connor's Landing. You can dock right at the front door. Nothing fancy inside, but they do serve good chicken dinners for $4.95. Strains of beautiful Ohio seem to come from the earth itself as you approach Ohio caverns. The piped-in music accentuates the beauty of the state's largest subterranean grottos that wander for more than a mile. Logan County, one of the reasons they call Ohio beautiful. For New Center 8's Consumer Watch, Neil Zerker in West Liberty, Ohio. Well, a little item in the sports news tonight could turn out to be mighty big. Bygone era is the topic of our Consumer Watch segment tonight. Here's New Center 8's Neil Zerker and a one tank of gasoline vacation to the Ohio River. On the map, Marietta looks like a long distance, but it's actually only a 324-mile round trip from Cleveland. Marietta calls itself the Riverboat City, and with good reason. There's the Ohio River Museum, complete with old canal barges, and even a retired paddle wheel boat, W.P. Snyder Jr., that can be visited. Also docked permanently in downtown Marietta is the Becky Thatcher Showboat that features authentic showboat melodrama. Here's our villain now. <laughs> On the second deck is the dining salon, looking for all the world like a scene from the 1890s. But this is Marietta's real jewel, the Valley Gem that seven days a week carries passengers on hour-long rides down the Muskingum and onto the Ohio rivers. Its genial pilot is Captain James Sands, who points out historical landmarks in this oldest settlement in the Northwest Territory. And it's not too late to ride the Valley Gem. The trips continue through the month of September. For New Center 8's Consumer Watch, Neil Zerker on board the Valley Gem in Marietta, Ohio. The final sailboat race of the season is just about to get underway now. And there are still a lot of vacation spots still open. On our Consumer Watch segment tonight, New Center 8's Neil Zerker takes us to visit the Old West in Michigan. It's a 284-mile round trip from Cleveland to Stagecoach Stop in Irish Hills, Michigan. That's about an hour's drive northwest of Toledo. It's also a trip back into time. The truly unique thing about Stagecoach Stop is the furnishings are not replicas, but real antiques. Over 10,000 of them, including the private railroad car of former president Dwight Eisenhower. The whole place is sort of an Old West museum, but it's also a museum fantasy land where you can become part of the action. Three, one, two, three, three! And every hour is high noon on the stagecoach stop, where cowboys stage gunfights just like the old western movies. Never could stand that hat. No, I hate life preservers. For New Center 8's Consumer Watch, this is Neil Zerger getting out of town at the stagecoach stop, Irish Hills, Michigan leaving behind more than a half a million dollars in damage. New Center 8's Neil Zerker reports from the scene. But arriving on the scene this morning told me it was like looking into the mouth of hell. This was a half million gallon fuel tank filled with over 300,000 gallons of heating oil at the Daniels Brothers Fuel Company on Mantle Road in Painesville Township. Arsonists apparently broke open several valves at the bottom of the tank early today and torched the leaking fuel. Flames at times reached over 300 feet in the air and for a while threatened some high voltage lines that had they gone, firemen said, would have darkened half of Lake County. 
Fortunately, the fuel tank is in a sparsely populated area and no one had to be evacuated. While firemen from three communities were fighting the fire, a second alarm came in at Painesville Raceway about a half mile away. Again, arsonists believed to be the same ones who touched off the fuel oil fire and started a blaze that destroyed the ticket booth and announcer's tower. A hand-printed sign claiming credit by a racist group for the Daniels Brothers fuel fire was found at the scene, but officials are discounting it as a plant to lead authorities away from the real suspects. Two men were arrested by Lake County Sheriff's deputies for disorderly conduct at the scene of one of the fires. They're being questioned about both of the fires. Neil Zucker, News Center 8 in Painesville Township. Center 8's Neil Zerker has put away his fishing hat and even that inner tube, but he is still traveling and for the next few weeks he'll be suggesting spots that you can reach on a tank of gasoline for an autumn getaway weekend. You can drive the 70 miles to Canal Fulton and back in a tank of gas and have enough left over to take you to work most of the next week. Now there are lots of things to do and lots of scenic historic sites, but one of my personal favorites is Oser's Dairy Store where you can still buy a soda for 50 cents and for 20 cents, a good-sized ice cream cone. The big activity this weekend will be the Yankee Peddler Festival, but here are a few other things to do. And no trip to Canal Fulton would be complete without a ride on the St. Helena II. The sights, the sounds, belong to a century long past. For New Center 8's Consumer Watch, Neil Zerker aboard the canal boat, St. Helena II. Well, the women are still swinging in our area, golf club. In our Consumer Watch segment tonight, New Center 8's Neil Zerker has a suggestion for a weekend getaway that you can reach and return on a single tank of gasoline. You can drive to Canton and back, a distance of about 80 miles, and still have gasoline left in your tank. One of the city's best-known landmarks is the National Football Hall of Fame. Surprisingly, many Ohioans who live close by have never visited the sports shrine. Even if you're not a football fan, you'll find many interesting things in the hall. A short distance away, the impressive monument to William McKinley, 25th President of the United States, who was assassinated at the beginning of his second term of office. 108 steps lead to his tomb which is open to visitors year-round. Next door is the Stark County Museum, where you can see, amongst other memorabilia, the McKinley front porch. He conducted his entire campaign for president from there. The voters came to him to hear his campaign promises, a bit different than presidential politics today. But perhaps Canton's best-kept secret is its beautiful city park and downtown area, a perfect place to sketch or have an impromptu picnic or just relax. For New Center 8's Consumer Watch, Neil Zerker in Canton. Looks like a great place to visit. I was gonna say, can I make a personal plug? Sure. The people of Canton. Jed, you'll be interested in tonight's Consumer Watch segment. New Center 8's Neil Zerker has some rather illuminating tips for you. Light up your life and your house with some bargain lamps from a Cleveland area lamp factory. These are discontinued models or overruns and are sold in three locations. While they claim they can save you 50 to 70 percent on the cost of lamps, some of the best bargains are weekly sales items such as these floor lamps for $17.95 or table lamps two for $27.50. They also have Tiffany style lamps for about $44 and up and you can save even more money by buying lamp parts here and making your own lamps. And it's not only lamps they sell, but lampshades as well. 
fifteen dollars down to as cheap as one dollar for this job here. And even if you don't have a lamp for a dollar, you could wear this one to your next party. For New Center 8's Consumer Watch, Neil Zerker at the Lamp Factory Outlet Store in Southland. Hi there. That kind of hat could catch on, I think. Unfortunately, Cleveland's are planning to take a weekend mini vacation. New Center 8's Neil Zerker on our Consumer Watch segment has a one tank of gas autumn getaway suggestion for you. Vermilion is only 45 miles to the west, but it is an ideal spot for an autumn getaway weekend. Lakefront cottages with spectacular views of the lake are still being rented, but rates now are much cheaper. And Vermilion's Harbortown District offers a quaint shopping district and much more. There's Hart's Drug Store, where they've operated a soda fountain since 1918, and they still make their own chocolate sauce for the sodas. And Schwanson's Bakery has been famous for their fresh-baked sour cream kuchen since 1890. The Kishman Fish Company is one of the last commercial fishing companies on the South Shore. You can take home some fresh Lake Erie perch without baiting a hook. The Great Lakes Museum overlooking Lake Erie offers a thrill of standing in a ship's pilot house, hearing the roar of the lake, Feel the ship's wheel in your hands. Surrounding Vermilion are many orchards. There was a bumper crop of apples this year, and some orchards allow you to pick your own at bargain prices. You can arrive by boat or car at McGarvey's Nautical Restaurant. Weekends, they offer a huge seafood buffet as well as their famous strawberry pie. And for a couple of bucks extra, you can board the McGarvey Party Boat for a 40-minute ride through the beautiful Vermilion Lagoons. For New Center 8's Consumer Watch, Neil Zerker, on an autumn getaway in Vermilion. That Neil's got a pretty nice job, doesn't he? <laughs> Face of the Browns continue to change today. In the fall, and if you plan to get away this weekend, New Center 8's Neil Zerker has some suggestions on our One Tank of Gas Consumer Watch segment. It's 30 winding miles following the Sandusky River from Tiffin to the Sandusky Bay. It's along some of the prettiest areas and most historic in Ohio. Start here for lunch or dinner at the Pioneer Mill Restaurant in Tiffin. A grist mill has stood on this site since 1822. The restaurant has won many awards for its food preparation and offers specials Monday through Friday priced at $5.50 to $7.95. While you're in Tiffin, be sure to stop at the Tiffin Crystal Plant Outlet Store. You can buy seconds of quality crystal at bargain prices. Down the autumn roadside a few miles and you come to Green Springs, Ohio. This spring pumps eight million gallons of crystal cold sulfur water into this pond each day. Once a world-renowned spa, it is still the largest sulfur springs in the world. The springs are owned by the Franciscan Sisters of Our Lady of Perpetual Help. They're open year-round. There is no admission. In Fremont, you can wander across the 25-acre estate of the 19th President of the United States, Rutherford B. Hayes. Spiegel Grove contains the Hayes Mansion, his grave, and the first presidential library museum in the United States. There is admission to the mansion and museum, but entrance to the estate is free. The grape harvest has started along Sandusky Bay, and you can visit the oldest family-owned winery in the country, Stoics. Weekends, you can watch them press grapes for their wine or apples for fresh cider that they sell at their farm market. For New Center 8's Consumer Watch, Neil Zerker driving along the Sandusky Bay. Well, when Mike Mitchell hits the floor tonight, he should be one more happy young man. No doubt about it. With Campy Russell gone, uh, the Cavaliers... New Center 8's Neil Zerker filled up his car with one tank of gas and headed for Southeast Ohio to Holmes County for his autumn getaway weekend. How's that going? This is Amish country. The largest concentration of Amish in the world live here, and an autumn weekend visit can be both relaxing and a trip into the past. The Amish farm, open to tourists, is located just outside of Berlin. You can wander through the buildings and visit with Amish employees, pet the animals for free. There's also a gift shop and an Amish bakery. There's a small charge for Amish buggy rides and a movie on Amish life. Surrounding the farm are side roads, each offering a living panorama of yesteryear. Capturing it all is artist Heinz Gaugel. 
daily working in an old church on his massive cyclorama, Demut, that covers part of the history of the Amish people. Spectators are welcome, there is no charge. Also, take time to listen to the sound of silence near a back road cornfield. Nearby is Wilmot, Ohio, and a triple tourist attraction, Alpine Alpa, a good restaurant with Swiss Amish cooking. Be sure to try their chicken or Swiss steak, both meals under $5. They also make cheese here, four tons of it each day and 15 different kinds. But their major attraction is this, the world's largest cuckoo clock, 23 and a half feet high, that performs every hour. For New Center 8's Consumer Watch, Neil Zerker on a getaway weekend in Holmes County. Well, I would say that last night probably saw for our Consumer Watch segment and our suggestion for a one tank of gasoline getaway weekend. Tonight, New Center 8's Neil Zerker takes off to discover why people love New York, Western New York State, that is. Westfield, New York is grape country. This is harvest time, and the smell of the freshly picked grapes is everywhere. At the Johnson Estate Winery, the pickers are hard at work, and tours are available each day. They'll also gladly let you sample the wines that they have on sale. In Maysville, New York, on the banks of the Chautauqua Lake, goat's milk fudge is made by the tub full. Webb's Candy Factory is open seven days a week. A couple of miles down the road and you can take the ferry boat for 50 cents across Lake Chautauqua from Stowe to Bemis Point. It only takes a few minutes and it runs anytime there's a car waiting to cross. While in Bemis Point, you might stop for dinner at the Heron Hounds restaurant, an exact replica of the original inn in Coventry, England. On the Seneca Indian Reservation in Salamanca, New York, you can visit the Seneca Iroquois National Museum. Only three years old, it has an artist in residence, Carter Waterman. Many of his paintings are on display, as well as other authentic Indian artifacts. The reservation is located in the heart of the beautiful Allegheny State Park. With autumn searing the trees with bursts of color, take time to stop, to look, and to listen. For New Center 8's Consumer Watch, Neil Zerker in Western New York. Baseball fans are getting more than they bought. peak. And if you plan a getaway weekend this week, New Center 8's Neil Zerker on our Consumer Watch segment has a one-tank trip that will take you where you can see all kinds of fall color. It's that fragile season again when nature, at first timidly and then boldly, splashes color across the hills and valleys and spins autumn brown leaves into streams and rivers, evoking an endless flow of memories of other autumns. Nature's blush is just beginning here in the Ohio Valley. A ferry boat has carried autumn visitors to Sisterville, West Virginia for 200 years. Is older, older than the tree. Sisterville, the Wells Inn, allows you to step back in time to the gay 90s when this tiny town was the oil capital of America. Fame has passed the town by, but the elegance of its dining room and the charm of this small town hotel lives on. Among the notables who have tarried here for a meal and a night's rest are James Cagney and Charles Kuralt. Forty miles downriver where the Muskingum empties into the Ohio is Marietta. Here you can board the Sternwheeler Valley Gem, cruise for four hours into an autumn paradise, inundated by the sights, the sounds of the Ohio Valley. For New Center 8's Consumer Watch, Neil Zerker in the Ohio Valley. Besides the job, Kuralt used chance to enjoy the brilliant fall colors. Tonight on our Consumer Watch segment, New Center 8's Neil Zerker wraps up his series of one tank of gasoline trips with a visit to Southern Ohio. The colors of autumn rain over this valley, called the paint by Indians. 
The colors, like a candle, burning brighter and brighter as it reaches the end of its time. Some say great glaciers form these hills and valleys, leaving in its wake areas like the Seven Caves. Others who look on this beauty say it was the handwork of God, and truly no human has yet created anything to match the simple grandeur of these autumn hillsides and valleys. Perhaps that is why prehistoric Indians settled here and built mysterious mounds like the giant serpent that stretches over a quarter of a mile. At the end of the valley, wearing its antiquity like a badge, is Chillicothe, the first state capital of Ohio. On a hill overlooking the town stands Ohio's Mount Vernon, Adena, home of Thomas Worthington, father of Ohio's statehood. Thomas Jefferson helped to design this home. Aaron Burr brought clippings from his own garden for the formal gardens here. Voices of Henry Clay and the Indian leader Tecumseh have been heard in these rooms, and it was here on an autumn morning in 1803 that Worthington and his friend, Governor Edward Tiffin, watched the sunrise over Mount Logan and were inspired to make a sketch that became the Great Seal of Ohio. Perhaps it is the ghosts of days that were, and not fog, that comes visiting on a late October's Eve. For New Center 8's Consumer Watch, Neil Zerker, Chillicothe, Ohio. Here is Neil Zerker in the News Center 8 newsroom. Good morning. That Republican victory tide that swept through the nation last night also moved through Ohio. The GOP will control the con congressional delegation 13 to 10. Democrat Dennis Eckert was one of those 10 Democrats. He won over Republican Joe Nara for the right to Congressman Charles Vanek's seat. The Republicans also took control of the Ohio Senate, winning at least four seats. Republican Ben Skull upset veteran state senator Anthony Calabrese. Other state races, Democrat Kenneth Rocco defeated John Stover in the 7th District state representative race. And another upset out in Parma, Gary Suodolnik dumped incumbent Democrat state senator Jerome Stano. Ohio voters overwhelmingly rejected state issue 2, plan to overhaul the state tax structure. The proposal opposed by the business community, banks, the League of Women Voters and others, offered $165 million in real estate tax relief for low- and middle-income families, but joined it with a $1 billion tax increase for large corporations. And the Cuyahoga County voters soundly rejected a proposal, proposed county charter amendment last night. With 62% of the vote in, there was 156,000 votes against the proposal. The one-half of 1% 1 increase in the city income tax was voted down, nearly 12,000 votes, but the city charter revision providing for four-year terms for mayor and city council passed by a scant 658 votes out of over 130,000 votes cast. Republican Virgil Brown became the first black ever elected to countywide office when he defeated Democrat County Chairman Timothy Hagan last night for Cuyahoga County Commissioner. In a race that went down to the wire, Brown won by about 9,000 votes. And and as we said earlier, both incumbent Democrats up for re-election to the Ohio State Senate lost, Anthony Calabrese and Jerome Stano. Some other races around the area this morning, the Ohio Supreme Court Chief Justice Celebrese won last night over Judge Sarah Harper, and Justice uh, Holmes defeated Gray and Clifford Brown over Dowd. After more than 35 years in politics, including 28 as a powerful U.S. congressman, the scandal-scarred career of Wayne Hayes came to a crashing halt last night as he was defeated through re-election to the Ohio House by a former U.S. embassy official in Iran seeking his first state office. We'll have more news in just a moment. This Thursday is Free Clinic Day in Cleveland. The Free Clinic has grown to where it now serves 200 people daily with free medical, dental, and mental health care. Programs at the clinic each year represent over $7 million worth of free services. Because of its 400 volunteers, every dollar you donate to the clinic provides $10 worth of services. On Thursday, November 6th, help the free clinic help others by calling 459-2525. Please call now. Christmas cards from the American Cancer Society are a way to give more than a greeting for the holiday season. 
Send American Cancer Society Christmas cards a very caring thought. Call the American Cancer Society at 241-1177 and order from six different and beautiful cards, available with or without your name imprinted. When you choose your cards, you'll be making a contribution to stop cancer. Who knows, it might be the contribution that does. Call 241-1177 or stop in at 1148 Euclid Avenue office. Some other vote returns from around the area this morning. It appears voters in Bay Village turned down a school levy last night. But Lakewood voters said yes to both a city income tax increase and a school levy. Operating levies were also approved in Brattonall, Cleveland Heights, and Mayfield. Income tax increases were apparently rejected by the voters in Highland Heights, Garfield Heights, and Broadview Heights. But in Cuyahoga Heights, voters said yes to a hike in their income tax. Let's take a look at the TV8 weather radar this morning. It's looking fairly good for today. Not many clouds around the area. In fact, the forecast is calling for variable cloudiness, a high of 48 today. Tonight, partly cloudy with a low in the upper 30s. And the present temperature is just 39 degrees. We'll be back at about 825 this morning, hopefully with some more returns. Until then, have a good morning. Well, that was the first report of News Center 8. You're invited to be with us at noon, 6 and 11, for all of today's news on...